an agency like Manahomes, everything begins and starts with relationship. Does it take absolutely special people? No, I don't think so. Because if someone would have asked me before, I would have said, no way, I couldn't do a job like that. It changes your demeanor, it changes your expectation, it also changes the reason why you do the work that you do. I just like the home environment. You know, I always say, I could never be the person who puts on a suit and goes to work every day. It's just the relaxed atmosphere, the casualness, just the fun, you know, the things we get to do here on a day-to-day -day basis. For me, the people aspect is not something that I was looking for when I, when I started working here. But I learned so much about people in general uh, from working with the people here. Uh, participants and staff as well. It, it is a family atmosphere with the staff, different than anything I've, I've ever heard of before. When new staff comes into Mena Homes, it's definitely an, an open and accepting environment. Everybody comes with different skills, different ideas, and those are all welcomed. Team members who have come here just to make money have been touched by what happens within this program because they've seen people changing their own behavior and their own perspectives and their own attitudes because of the beauty and the wealth and the wonderful things that they're seeing in what they're doing. There is the ability for me to bring me to work. I can come with ideas, I can come with activities, I can come with crafts. I have that freedom to add my personality to work and incorporate that. There's a Christian component to their caring and, and that's evident in everything they do. They honestly care. Each home has different participants with different needs, but the foundation of why we're all here is the same. We're here to support and educate and provide assistance where needed and develop skills. You know, when some of the ladies moved here, there's, there's things that they had never done, so they got to learn those new areas, you know, such as doing their own laundry and cooking and cleaning and, and things that they have learned and developed skills around. To be able to step back and let the participants do what they're able to do without us doing it for them is a real big focus of, of the program at Garden Place. And with my supervisor, you know, we can have open communication, we can discuss the needs of the program, we can bring concerns and ideas and suggestions and as a team can sit down and discuss, you know, what we think an individual might need spending the time with each individual and learning their personalities. And they know my personality. They know me just as well as I know them. Knowing the participants, I can kind of think, okay, you know, this person might really like to do this this weekend, or this person might really like to do this on this day. And just being sure that you're incorporating something for everybody. Just the freedom to, to be able to bring my own personality, my likes into work and feel good about working for men homes. It's very interesting when you're working with different shifts, with different staff, and how you see the different personalities come out in the participants, the way they react with me and joke around with me is so different than the way they may talk to a different staff and have kind of inside jokes there you go. with them and you're kind of like <laughs> left in the, in the dust like well what, what's that about you know what I've never seen them say that before but it's a joke that they have going with another staff so it's really interesting to see those relationships you know they're genuinely concerned about staff as, and the relationship that we have with each and every one of them.
The mental industries is quite different from most shops. It has to do with the orientation of the staff. They're here to serve a purpose mm -hmm. more than just mm -hmm. looking for a job. They're here to be mentor, buddy. There's a lot of hats you have to wear on a given day. And uh, this place is full of special people that way. I've always been independent and worked strictly by myself. The only conversation I had during the day was with a dog. So it was very quiet working. This is very, very different. Lots and lots of interaction, but lots of opportunities to teach uh, various concepts that, like, I, that I have picked up over time. And some of the fellows will ask you know, about certain things and you can help them out with things and they pick it up and they're happy to do their jobs and they do a good job, they're, they're good at what they do. Everybody's abilities are different and so when someone comes in uh, new, uh, we usually try to get them to work in various parts of the shop or, uh, or other programs and try to see where they, where they fit in the best. And that's what we're doing with the participants, finding their strengths and um, they, they move from one job to the other uh, looking for those strengths. Um, one fellow was started out in the paper room uh, sorting papers. Well, it was found that he could do much more and now he's at the saw sharpening stakes. And he's beaming all the time uh, how many stakes he's done in a day. It's amazing, like we got guys that start off never never working with any power tools or anything and they're, they're running gang rip saws and, uh, and very safely too. This is their job and they, uh, <laughs> they take a lot of pride in it. They're very, very excited about coming to work and being part of a, a working community. For everyone here, I don't think there's a single one that would deny this. This is, this is their place. A lot of times uh, team members have uh, worked together all week and actually gone out camping or fishing on the weekend together and that's kind of unique. It's really neat to see. When I first came I was a little surprised. We build relatively high-end furniture uh, for this type of a shop. It's beyond the capabilities of the fellows on their own but we have them involved so that the end product is something that they can say they had a part in and it's something that is marketable. In fact, uh, we have no problem moving anything that we produce mm -hmm. here, which is really good. And for the fellows, they, they know that they're a part of something much bigger. They get their satisfaction from it and they're comfortable here. It's all those good things. With the fellows that I work with in the shop here, they are very accepting, uh, very honest, they will let you know where they're at. They let you know how they feel. It's pretty much on the surface, so mm -hmm. you're not guessing. Mm -hmm. It's very upfront, and that is kind of free. You need to see the individual rather than to see the bottom end, the, the mm -hmm. production, how many pieces we get out. You need to see them succeed uh, individually. That, yeah, in, in a sense like that, it is, yeah. it's ministry. We run a paper sorting, a recycling program. We do a curbside uh, pickup, and we're part of the Saskatoon Regional Waste Management. So we get uh, loads that come in to us, and we sort and uh, process paper, cardboard, uh, tin, that sort of thing. Growing area, I suppose, would be our SAR cans right now. We operate uh, two SAR cans, uh, one here in Waldheim. It's a small depot and we operate a uh, large depot in Martinsville. And uh, the depot in Martinsville is, is increasing by leaps and bounds. We've uh, you know, seen 30, 30 to 33% increase year after year. And uh, we're starting to challenge the, the city for, uh, uh, for increase in size each year. So we're probably looking at you know, somewhere between four and five million beverage containers there this year. Uh, right now, I mean, uh, with the economy uh, in Saskatchewan and uh, the products that we're building, I, I feel quite confident that uh, we're here to stay. You know, Mennonites have been doing work across the globe in Africa and Haiti and South America. And at the heart of that is really looking at the life of Jesus. And it was a life of servitude, it was a life of selflessness, and it was a life of giving. So we're learning more about that in this program, learning more about how to be compassionate in moments when we're seeing the most difficult and challenging behaviors. The work that is expected of me seems to be very secondary to the simple fact that if you treat people with dignity and respect, amazing things happen in their life. Their outlooks and how they see themselves, 
changing the way people view themselves changes the way people view their possibilities, which changes the way that they live, which changes their behavior. So what we do here is build relationships with people and get to know them so that when they move to their next home, we can go before them and prepare that place for them and relate to the people that will be accepting them. We have three individuals living with us right now that have all come to us in situations where we really weren't quite sure what the outcome would be. The issue of hope is um, such a central theme to people's lives when they don't have it. If you're an individual who is neglected and you have no sense of family and they have no interest in you and this individual comes to you broken and exhibiting aggressive behaviors on a regular basis and you slowly see this individual from day to day move into a place where he's slapping fives with team members, making food, laughing, building relationship when there was no sense of trust in him before and really beginning to be the young man that you know he really wanted to be. That is the most beautiful thing to watch. That is a gift. I watch these things happen in front of me on a regular basis where Humble and well-spirited team members are investing themselves in building relationships, giving dignity to people who have been forgotten. It's an amazing process. The most powerful work that has been done here doesn't happen when I'm here training and supervising this team. It happens Sunday evenings, Saturday afternoons, Wednesday nights, when people are hanging out in this kitchen, cooking brownies, having coffee, laughing, teasing each other, having food fights. That's when the magic happens. So we continue to learn a lot. We're at the beginning stages of this program, but we are all get, we're all enriched with a sense of excitement because we are beginning to see this program uh, do good on what it was intended and visioned to do.